All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Real Music Observer. My name is Dave, observing real music in real time for real people, just like you right there and this guy right here. So I'm getting into West Coast rock. Uh, some people call it yacht rock, West Coast rock, uh, AOR, adult-oriented rock. Uh, and most of this stuff was recorded from, say, 1975 maybe up until 84, 85, before it gets a little too techy sounding. But even after that, <clears throat> there's music that more or less holds true to the template, but sounds a little more high tech. And then once the 80s are over, there are a lot of artists that came back in the 90s and even up until now, who every once in a while record an album out of this tradition. I, I did a feature video on a gospel artist the other day uh, who certainly had uh, that template um, just brilliant stuff um, and loving it so it kind of got me researching a bit into this music and this morning you know here I am maybe 15 years old in 1980 and I remember hearing some of this stuff on the radio uh, like Ambrosia and Robbie Dupree and obviously groups like Steely Dan, which uh, more or less helped found the entire genre, if you ask me. But there are other groups like Toto that kind of did it and then got away from it, but still every so often record some of it. Uh, there's a group of artists and writers and producers and arrangers and players that were all playing on everyone's album from say I don't know that that time frame I gave you but especially in the late 70s and early 80s uh, I found this group that if you like Steely Dan uh, you should check out this group called Far Cry uh, I believe they only had two albums I may be wrong uh, I, my head is kind of exploding because I'm trying to sort of absorb all of this information I got a friend now from Italy who <laughs> has been sending me music and and basically tells me all of this stuff is available if you go on Amazon too you can kind of find this out for yourself um, it's available as like a Japanese import uh, to order and it's it's a little pricier than your typical CD sometimes it's available for download and other times it's it's not you got to go to Japan and get the stuff and it's rather ironic in a sense that the way I look at it is the way music came out in the 70s and early 80s, it was like a whole bunch of seeds got thrown out there. And some of it was on fertile ground and it grew and radio picked up on it. And for whatever reason, some of the other stuff just sat on the side of the road and didn't blossom, didn't grow. And now people are going back and they're noticing, hey, look at these trees. <laughs> that weren't here or I didn't notice before. And that's the way I'm kind of looking at this now. Uh, I spent a good chunk of this morning listening to a guy by the name of Dane Donahue. Had one album, uh, 78 it came out, and it's like uh, Eagles, Dan Fogelberg, Little River Bandish. Uh, it's got all of this stuff going on in it. Uh, it's it's West Coast. It's got all of that flavor. I hear Tim Schmidt singing background vocals. Uh, you know, if I had the album credits, uh, you'd probably see like the Porcaro Brothers or Russ Kunkel playing on it. Uh, all of these guys who were in the studio helping each other out. Uh, I know a lot of times you get like a Linda Ronstadt or a Nicolette Larson singing backup vocals. And uh, I'm listening to this album. He's got a tune called Casablanca. Okay, and this is on YouTube. And I believe if it's on YouTube, you'll find it on Spotify. I didn't go check Amazon out. Again, not a name that just rolls off. Dane Donahue, okay? And uh, it's great stuff. It's a great album. He only had one album. But I spent a lot of time listening to it and really enjoyed it. And then this other guy, Terrence Boylan, who I vaguely remember for some reason, I'm not sure, he was on the Eagles record label Asylum, which had so many artists uh, 
back in the day because I remember having the albums with the logo, with the Asylum logo, and again, this is, <laughs> you may not be getting this, uh, and if this video goes over your head and it's boring, and I get it, uh, it's a little self-indulgent on my part, but I spent time listening to this guy's debut album, and again, Eagles, Crosby, Stills, Nash, Jackson Brown, Dan Fogelberg, uh, I mean, it's it's just so well written and, and so well produced and sung. And this is the point here. You know, in my quest to kind of get closer to what I consider to be real music these days and to, to try to find stuff that's authentic nowadays, you know, you find little bits and pieces of it, music from overseas, uh, people trying to imitate the kind of stuff that I'm talking about now, but it really, I'm gonna be honest, and I don't wanna hurt anyone's feelings over this comment, but it really pales in comparison to going back to say 1980 or 1981 or 82 and hearing some some really well-produced uh, drums and guitars and the horns coming in here and there on different projects, uh, listening to some early Philip Bailey uh, from 1984, it was blowing me away, it was a Christian album but yet the production values are just so incredible. And again, I talk about ear candy. And that's another strain of this is a Christian contemporary version of all this stuff. I listened to this dude uh, named uh, Bruce Hibbard. I was blown away by the quality of that record. And uh, Rob Meal, M-E-H-L, had a couple of tunes that even though, look, if you're not into the Christian stuff, just Listen to it for the music uh, value of it, because it's, it is, uh, these guys were just, this wasn't your cookie cutter Christian music of today. This is, uh, I mean, it's like I was telling you about Mr. Bronze the other day. His music, again, is not going to be on a Christian radio station because it's, well, it's, it's not, you know, the sound per se that they're trying to promote, which to me, everything just sounds the same and, you know, I don't know. Maybe 20 years from now, people will say, well, that was the kind of music that was good. But you could see a progression when you go back to this music. And again, this music might be too jazzy, might too, be too R&B for some of you. Uh, it might not have enough of that incredible wall of sound that eats you alive when you get into the car and put on a CD. I mean, I like some of that, and I listen to a lot of that. But maybe it's age. I'm starting to really enjoy music where I can hear hey, there's the bass line, hey, there's, listen to that cool guitar part in my left ear coming in, you know? Uh, and these are things, by the way, you could just tell uh, the production was way more meticulous. It's like everybody was trying to be Steely Dan uh, or the Eagles. They were trying to kind of just produce records that were extremely listenable and careful and well-constructed uh, and the melodies, the melodies alone were, were far, it just, the new music that comes out, even if it's from Sweden and so forth, they touch on it here and there. They might have one or two songs. These albums are like seven, eight, nine, sometimes ten tracks deep, that Bruce Hibbard thing. It's a ten track album of just like one great song after another. Uh, no filler. And the two albums I listened to this morning, again, Terrence Boylan, B-O-Y-L-A-N, his debut album. He's got two albums. I listened to the first one and then this guy Dane Donahue who only had one album and then I've been absorbing all this other music. Uh, I was telling you about this group Far Cry which only had a couple of songs I could find. Again, a Japanese import. So <laughs> I don't know. I guess they get it in Japan, you know, uh, but uh, and Sweden and Italy. Uh, my friend from Italy basically is a musicologist in what he calls West Coast Rock, and uh, I'm learning a lot. See, I don't know it all, and anyone who comes on here and says that I pretend I know it all, I don't. Uh, and the music I really love is from that era, because I was 13, 14, 15, 16 years old listening to this stuff, and uh, who knew how much more of it was out there? It's just... It's, it's insanity. It's as if there's, again, a whole side of the road that we drove by with all this music and I'm turning around, bringing the car back around so I can go get it and find it and listen to it.
So that's my self-indulgent video, West Coast Rock. What do you think? Is it a bunch of crap? Is it too soft for you? Uh, is it too wimpy? Because it's not for me. I mean, it's, it's great music. It's guys like David Foster who produced and Jay Graydon and all these other guys that came along who, uh, you know, for bad or worse, made some amazing music, and I think it's mostly for the better. My name's Dave. I'll talk to you again soon. West Coast Rock. Try to dig it. If not, check out my next video. Talk to you then.